Saw a guy lying there with an anchor. So I took the gun. Thought it might come in handy. Guess what? I just shot a bear. Crackles, I got so many answers to that question. I wouldn't even know where to start. Hello, everyone. It is me, Shawnee B. Hope you've all had a great week. Today I'm going to talk to you about everything that happened in the seventh episode of season six of Lost called Dr. Linus. And just a quick announcement before I get started. The best way to reach me again is through Facebook and not through YouTube. I know a lot of you guys are trying to send me messages through YouTube. But they make it kind of hard to check up on them and they don't show you what you previously sent. So I'll put a link to my Facebook page over there if you want to send me a message. Want me to always respond, I always do it through there. And of course, as always, before we get started, Fast Reflex Award time. And boom goes the dynamite. And congrats to these 10 people down here. I don't know how you guys do it that fast, but good job any way you guys are doing it. Here are the pictures that you guys got. And again, if you want to be mentioned in these recaps as a Reflex Award winner, just tell me what the image is and when the image is and when it pops up, and the top five people will get mentioned in the next recap. As always, I'm going to start with the flash sideways first with Ben, Dr. Linus, and everything that happened with him, and then go on to all the stuff that happened on the island. So let's get it started. We start off with Ben, who, as we saw in the substitute episode, is a history teacher in the flash sideways timeline. He teaches his class about an island called Elba, where Napoleon lost his greatest test, his power. Also, Ben draws a curved line under Elba here, and somehow here, it magically transforms into a straight line. Hmm. Obviously, the show is trying to compare Ben to Napoleon, and as we know, Ben's greatest struggle was losing his power as leader, just like Napoleon here. But Napoleon did eventually escape the island of Elba, he went back to France and regained some of his old troops, and he ruled again for a hundred days after attacking the capital. And this might relate directly to Ben, who knows. But also on a side note, Elba's actually an anagram for Abel, who was the son of Adam and Eve in the Bible, and was killed by his brother Cain. And as we know, I talked about in some past recaps, the man in black and Jacob can actually be related to Cain and Abel. There's a lot of symbolism between the two. Principal Reynolds calls Ben into his office and makes Ben head detention all week, which makes it so he can't do his history club. An interesting trivia point here is that the principal's full name is Donald Lawrence Reynolds. Now if we mix the letters around in Donald Lawrence Reynolds, it's actually an anagram for a cloned world nearly ends. A clue maybe? <laughs> Who knows? Also, we saw Reynolds was one of the names on the wall and in the lighthouse as a candidate. So back to school. Ben is venting his frustrations to Arts, the science teacher there, when Locke, who as we know is a substitute teacher at that school, overhears and tells Ben that maybe he should become the principal. This almost directly parallels to Ben and Locke back in the hatch in season two, except just in opposite ways. If you remember, Ben wonders why Locke lets Jack call the shots and thinks that Locke should be in charge, whereas here in the flash sideways, Locke thinks that Ben should be in charge and that he should be calling all the shots. Ben goes home and takes care of Roger, his dad who's dying. It's funny because in the original timeline, Ben kills his dad with gas, but in this timeline, he's using gas to keep his dad alive. Ben thinks that he himself is a loser, and Roger wonders if their lives would have been better if they never went to the island in the first place. And this statement revealed a lot to us. This means that Ben and his dad probably left the island before Ben was shot by Saeed, probably before 1974. Also, Saeed wasn't there on the island to shoot him because the plane never crashed, meaning that they couldn't go back in time so Saeed could shoot him. In the flash sideways, no one travels back in time. Ben never gets shot, and Richard never meets Locke back in 1952. The universe is trying to course correct itself like Eloise hints at, so that the same people are running into each other during this flash sideways timeline. The main idea all along has been that the bomb is what causes the island to sink and make it so Flight A15 doesn't crash. The only thing is though, if the Losties never crash then, and they don't go back in time to set off the bomb, what causes the island to sink? I talked about the Schrodinger's cat paradox in other videos, and I won't get into it now, but that's a possibility. One theory is that the Losties actually going back in time to the 1970s and earlier is actually what caused the split timeline and dual realities, and that's something else that they did earlier in those timelines altered the past and caused the separate realities. And while I don't fully agree with this theory, it's just another idea. There's like thousands of ideas out there on what caused the split timeline, whether it was the bomb or something else. 
but I want to really know what you guys think. So down in the comment section, let me know. Alex Rousseau, his favorite student, knocks on his door and wonders if he can tutor her. So the next morning, he does. She gets frustrated with not knowing an answer and claims that she needs to succeed because of her mother's sacrifices. And also just to clarify, since I got a lot of questions for some reason asking about this, wondering if Alex is Ben's daughter in this Flash Sideways timeline too. Remember though, in the original timeline, he was never her biological father. He just took her from Rousseau. Ben says the principal's writing a good recommendation letter for her, but Alex implies that he's a pervert and goes on to say that he was getting it on with the nurse. She makes Ben promise not to tell. Yeah. So of course Ben doesn't keep his word, and he cons Arts into accessing Principal Reynolds' email account in exchange for a better parking spot. <laughs> and this is probably why he wants a new spot. Ben finally has the emails of the dirty talk between the old principal and the hot nurse. He goes into his office and tries to make the principal quit and recommend Ben to take his job as principal, but Reynolds counters and promises to torch Alex and her future if Ben goes through with his threat. And of course, Ben chooses mm -mm Alex. <laughs> Later, Alex comes in to thank Reynolds for the amazing letter, and Ben falsely tells her that he had nothing to do with it. All right, that's basically everything that happened in Ben's Flash Sideways, so now let's go to the island. And I'm gonna break the island scenes up into two parts as well, starting with the stuff that happened in the Black Rock with Richard, Jack, and Hurley, and then talk about Ben on the island. Jack and Hurley are on their way to the temple. Hurley's kind of stalling because of what Jacob told him about the temple, when they run into Richard, who leads them to the Black Rock. On the way there, Hurley asks Richard how he looks the exact same as he did 30 years ago. Which is interesting because Hurley was one of the Lossies who never actually saw or met him 30 years ago. Hmm. Richard tells him he doesn't age because of Jacob. That when he touches you, you don't age. Or at least a variation of that. So the question here is, does this mean Jack, Hurley, Sawyer, Kate, Saeed, Jin, and Son are immortal now? And they won't age because Jacob touched them like Richard says? Well, none of the people I've mentioned have changed in physical appearance. Except maybe Hurley getting bigger on the island. So the only problem is though that Kate and Sawyer were touched when they were younger and they grew up. It could be like an elvish thing from Lord of the Rings where you get to a certain age and then you don't age from then on. Or it could just mean that it's on the, only on the island where you don't age. They all turn up at the Black Rock where Richard says, there's a little something I gotta do, die. Inside, Richard looks all nostalgic and reminisces to Jack that he hasn't been here in a long time. And this pretty much confirms that Richard came to the island on the Black Rock. Remember Flock said a few episodes ago, it's good to see you out of your chains. Maybe signifying that Richard was a slave on the Black Rock, maybe it was a slave ship. But I think we'll see more of it in a couple episodes when it's Richard's back burner. Richard opens the box of dynamite, but claims that he can't kill himself even if he wants to. So he wants Hurley or Jack to do it for him. Richard tells Jack that he devoted his life to serving Jacob, who told Richard that he had a plan for him and that he would reveal that plan when the time was right. Now that Jacob's dead, Richard thinks that his entire life has had no purpose. He makes Jack light the fuse and tells him to get out, but Jack is now a man of faith and knows that he won't die too, since he was also touched by Jacob. He also tells Richard about the lighthouse and that Jacob wanted him to know that he had been watching him since he was a kid. Jack also thinks Jacob brought him to the island for a reason, and that the reason couldn't be to die with Richard. Richard's like, thanks, that makes me feel better. It would be funny if the dynamite exploded right then. <laughs> But Jack's right, and it stops at the last second. Then they start heading back to the beach, where Jack says it all started. Now let's talk about the facts we know, and about the rules of having the gift from Jacob. Now if you have this gift, you can't kill yourself, as shown in the scene with Richard and Jack. Also remember Michael, he can't kill himself. As we know, he was a candidate on the wall at one time. And then Jin, he miraculously survived the Kahana explosion. We also know if you have the gift, you can't kill another person who also has the gift. And we see this in the scene with Widmore and Ben, assuming at some point during their lives they were touched by Jacob. Remember the scene where they're at night in Widmore's room and they know they can't kill each other because of the rules. Also with some of the remarks Ben said when he was a prisoner in the hatch, he didn't seem too worried that he'd be killed in there at all in fact. The only problem with this idea, this second rule, 
is that Ben killed Locke. Another fact that we know and another rule that comes with having this gift is that the man in black can't kill you. As we saw with Sawyer, he doesn't kill him. He also doesn't see, want to kill Saeed when he first sees him. Now remember that boy in the jungle when the man in black sees him, the boy says, you can't kill him. Now in the past recaps I talked about maybe it's referring to Richard, maybe it's referring to Jacob, but it could be referring to Sawyer. And if this is true, this is just more evidence of that rule. Remember too, after the boy says that, the man in black says, don't tell me what I can't do, showing that he wants to break the rules or that he wants the choice of free will. And the last rule or fact that we know that comes with having the gift is that the man in black can't be killed by someone who has the gift, as evidenced by Saeed stabbing the man in black and nothing happening. I also think that all the gifted people are candidates, but not all the candidates are gifted. 